welcome back to my channel. My name's Amber and I am a former elementary teacher that uprooted from Texas to South Florida to lead social media and influencer marketing for two ed tech brands, one based in sunny South Florida and the other one in Brooklyn, New York. I absolutely love what I do. I seriously think stepping out of teaching, this is probably the best job that I could have ever pursued. But ultimately, I am a teacher first. I love the teacher community. I love connecting with every single one of y'all. So that's why this channel will have a collection of ed tech tips for you as well as my ed tech life. In my last video, I posted about how Nearpod can be used in a virtual classroom. And if you watch that video, you're probably thinking, okay, this is great but how do I get started? So that's what this video is about. This video is gonna show you the two different ways that you can launch a Nearpod lesson, whether you're in a virtual classroom, a physical classroom, or a hybrid classroom. So even though the title of this video is a virtual classroom because I'm gonna be giving specific instances about that, a lot of these tips can be used in whatever type of environment, so make sure you keep watching so you can see how you can get started with Nearpod today. But like not today because you're not back in school yet. But like some of you are and that kind of stresses me out for you. So like hang in there, boo. You know, you know, you know. Okay, now we're a little up close and personal, but I feel like a talking head in a tech tutorial is probably not the move for this video. So I'm gonna share with you the two different ways that you can launch your Nearpod lesson, which is a live lesson mode and a student pace. And I'm gonna share the different ways that you can do that. So right now I have my screen split into two screens. This is the teacher mode, what the teacher would see, and this on this side is what the student would see. The first mode is a live lesson mode. A live lesson mode is where a teacher controls the flow of the lesson, which means everything that you see on your teacher screen, the students will see at the same time. This is really beneficial to simulate an in-classroom experience where you're showing slides, and it's a way to increase accountability and structure to ensure that your students are on task looking at what you're looking at. I'm going to go ahead and launch a new live lesson. So you'll notice when I click live participation, I actually already launched a lesson prior. So it says this lesson has more than one active session. What would you like to do? This is key if you're teaching, say, two or three science classes or two or three math classes to different students, and you wanna make sure and keep all that data separate, you can launch three different Nearpod codes for the same lesson, and that way all of the data gets filtered in their respective reports, so then you're not creating a crumble of data that you're gonna get confused about and then not wanna sift through. You know, we just keep it real on this channel. like. You know? So I'm gonna go ahead and launch a new live lesson. And when I launch a new live lesson, it gives me all of these options that I can share to my screen. I can share this code via email, social media link, a regular web link, Google Classroom, Remind, and directly to Microsoft Teams. If you see a way that you typically share, it's not here, then this web link is going to be your most universal because you can just copy the link and paste it and then the students can join just by clicking that link. But if you're, say, on a Google Hangout or a Zoom or a GoToWebinar, you can just tell them the code that pops up on the screen. They can go to nearpod.com, insert the code, which is what you're seeing me do right here, and then they're already in the lesson. Now, Nearpod does not have individual student accounts, which is amazing because that means it complies with all the student data privacy laws because students just insert a name and then that's the name that will be used for their reports and how you'll see them in the lesson. I know what you're thinking. What if my students log in with all of these funny names and blah, 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 blah. Okay, y'all, come on, we gotta set proper classroom management expectations in our class. Just like when you introduce new math manipulatives or just any new thing in general, you set expectations on what's appropriate and not appropriate behavior. This is one instance where you would probably call out, please insert with your first and last name, or you can insert your first name and one emoji, or like don't even say that because it's just gonna like send everyone down a downward spiral. Again, just keeping it real, you know? I taught with Nearpod. I absolutely love using Nearpod in my classroom. So if you have any questions about managing that in your classroom, it's so easy, but I am here for you. So drop me a comment below. As a student, I'm gonna join this lesson. And now, 
what you'll notice on the screen is that both slides are displaying the exact same image. So when a teacher advances to the next slide, all of the devices are synchronized. This is a great option if you're teaching whole group, if you wanna make sure that the students are on task with the material that you're presenting to them at this time, and you can also weave interactive activities within the lesson. I went into the different interactive activities in my last video using Nearpod in a virtual classroom. I'm not gonna dig into that today because that video definitely covers it. I'm gonna link it below. If you haven't seen that video, I'll quickly highlight that what you'll notice is that the student is actually seeing the student view and you're seeing the classroom results. Now, if you're sharing your screen in a Zoom meeting or a Google Hangouts or a Microsoft Teams and you don't want to show all of the names, I can click hide student names and now you'll notice the names are hidden. Also, if a student gets out of the material, I can see the list of all of the names and then this light would turn red. But what I wanna show here is I can switch to student view. Now you'll notice that the teacher screen is displaying what the students would see. So this is beneficial if you're sharing your screen and you don't want the students to see their friend's answers, how many they got right, how many they got wrong, etc. It is literally a click of a button. And when I wanna go back, I just click switch to teacher view and boom. Now we're back to normal. Okay, so that is the first way that you can launch a lesson, which is a live mode. Remember, a live mode is going to simulate that in-classroom feel. The teacher is gonna have the most support structure because you're going to control what your students see. You can add a web link and the students are on that one website. There are so many different options. I encourage you to explore it. Okay, the second mode I'm going to share with y'all in ways that you can launch a Nearpod lesson is a student-paced mode. Now, this sounds exactly like what it is. It means the pacing of the lesson is controlled by the student. I know, we are very novel at Nearpod by naming our things, but like, it's gotta be intuitive, right? <laughs> What this means is that a teacher launches the lesson and the student controls the flow of the lesson. This is great if you give student paced codes to students to complete work on their own, whether it's extra practice, spiral review, extending their learning on a particular topic. This also increases flexibility for not only the student but the parent, so then they can work on the material when it's most convenient for them, which is key for a distance learning environment. If you're in a hybrid or a teaching experience right now, student paced codes are going to come in handy for say centers. You can give the different codes and put them on one part of the wall, have students complete them and turn them in by the end of the week, or you can flip your classroom, have one class work on student pace codes, and the other class you're directly teaching with a Nearpod lesson. The opportunities are so endless, it's very flexible. If you can think of an idea that I didn't share, make sure you drop a comment below so then other people that are navigating Nearpod for the first time can learn from not just me, but you too, because we've all got tons of ideas. Okay, now we're back to in your face, so here I am. I'm going to show you how to share with student pace. Hover over my lesson that I wanna launch. I'm going to click student pace. And again, I can have multiple student pace codes just like I could in a live lesson. I'm going to click launch student pace and you're gonna see the same options to share a link that I could before. You're going to see two new buttons though. Require student submissions and the ability to extend your student pace codes. Require student submissions is a game changer for your lessons because now you're going to increase structure in that self-directed learning experience because the student can't just continue to click to the next slide and just rush through it. But when there are those quick checks and formative assessments like polls, multiple choice, open-ended questions embedded within, that student has to uh, stop, answer that question, reflect on their learning before they go to the next slide which is key. You cannot monitor them all the time, whether you're in a virtual classroom or a physical classroom, am I right? I also shared that you can extend the codes for student paced lessons. So when I click this button here, I can actually click how long I want the duration of that code to last. This is key if say, even if I'm in a physical classroom and I'm doing centers, I can have those centers up for an entire month or for two weeks, however long I'm teaching that standard. If I'm also doing spiral review and it's in a virtual classroom, I can give them that code and extend it. So then there's not that immediacy to do it right then and there and put strain on not only the students and the parents, 
but increased flexibility as everybody is navigating this new world. I'm pretty sure you get what this is, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. When I join from a student account, you're going to see that nothing happened on the teacher screen, so I just launched my lesson and now the student joins. And now as the student, I can scroll on my own without the teacher having to control the screen. Here I am at an open-ended question, and if I were to try to advance out of nowhere, it would just say, er, it looks like you haven't answered this question. Please submit an answer before going on the next slide. So now it forces that student to answer that question and not just fly by the seat of their pants, which again is increased structure for you and peace of mind. Now, I know I shared that there are two ways to launch a Nearpod lesson, but you might be a little confused because you saw there were three buttons. I just didn't want to confuse y'all because the two main modes are live lesson and student pace. However, Nearpod has a direct integration with Zoom where you can launch your Nearpod lesson directly with Zoom with a free Zoom account. I felt like this was next level information and I wanted you to focus on the meat and potatoes before I gave you the specialty cheese. And I also didn't want to confuse y'all because I didn't want you to think, wait a minute, what if I use Google Hangouts or GoToWebinar or Microsoft Teams or Big Blue Button and I can't use Nearpod? That is not the case. So Nearpod just happens to have a direct Zoom integration where you can launch your lesson directly with Zoom, but you can still use all of the other platforms seamlessly. We're just lucky enough to have that direct integration with Zoom built into the platform. Okay, y'all, that was the two, technically three ways that you can launch a Nearpod lesson. I hope this was a quick, informative way for you to get started with Nearpod as you're getting your feet wet, navigating this virtual learning, distance learning, hybrid approach. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and click that bell so you can get notified of all my future uploads. I'm uploading new videos every week, and these are gonna span to ed tech tips for you as well as my life in ed tech because, y'all, seriously, transitioning from teaching to tech, I'm still learning so much. I'm still growing in so many ways. There are definitely some pain points, and I, want to be open and share that lifestyle with you. So again, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment, let me know if you've tried Nearpod, what other tools you love to use, and let's start a conversation. I will see you in my next video.